So here we have the Scots Pine, or Pinus Sylvestris. When you look looking at identifying pine trees or conifers, the first place to look, I would say, is the needles. So if you look a bit closer, you can see that this is actually a two-needle pine tree. So you have two needles per one of these little branch branchy stems here. So they paired up. You can have three or five needle pines too. Now the needles of the Scots pine, they tend to be rather flattish on one side if you look carefully. This quite vivid green and they, they tend to be quite short, so under seven centimeters. Some of the other pines I've come across in this area, the needles are very much longer and 12 centimeters plus. These are quite short. When you're looking at the bark, it's a, it's a gray papery dark bark verging to orange in the high canopy. So the young trees tend to be that orangey brownish color before moving on to this gray color. It's gone a bit green with the moss, but shouldn't harm the identification too much. Another identifying feature of pine trees are their cones. So the Scots pine cone tends to split open for this classic pine cone shape. And if you look in the center of the scales, there's this ridge or protrusion. That's another classic feature of this pine cone. Okay. So the Scots pine uses, it, it would can be used as a firewood. It, it burns hot and fast like other conifers, but doesn't spit as much as say larch. The, it is a softwood, so the timber is mainly used for poles and fencing, but it is quite hard for the softwood family. One of the better reasons to look at this tree is that the pine needles themselves can actually be brewed into quite a nice tea, which is very high in vitamin C. So there you go, Scots pine. Pinus Silvestris.